Here's another example of how to work with complex fractions or what I would like to call very complicated fractions. Notice that we have a numerator divided by a denominator. But in the numerator and the denominator, we have additional fractions. We have one here plus another fraction there. We have a fraction here and a fraction there. So the way I like to solve these problems is to look at each fraction in the numerator and each fraction in the denominator and look for all the denominators in those fractions. And so I'm going to circle those in red. There's a y minus 3, there's an x, there's an x, and there's an xy minus 3x. All right, now to simplify the problem in an easy fashion, I would like to multiply the whole numerator and whole denominator by the lowest common denominator of all those denominators. To do that, I recognize that I can probably factor something first. In this case, I can here probably factor out an x. So let me do that first. I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. Write this as 3 divided by y minus 3 plus 2 over x, that's the numerator, divided by 5 over x minus 2 divided by, and factoring out an x, I have x times y minus 3. The reason why I did that, and I'm going to recircle now my denominator, so this is this denominator here, there, that hasn't changed, but notice I now have written this as the factored form of that denominator. And by doing that, I realize now that there's a y minus 3 there, there's a y minus 3, an x, an x, and an x. So it looks like the lowest common denominator in this case is simply the product of x times y minus 3 which means I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the lowest common denominator of x times y minus 3. And here I'm going to multiply this denominator by x times y minus 3. Now this gets a little bit more complicated, so now I'm going to go ahead and write this out. I'm going to multiply this times this, and this times this, and same this times this, and this times this. So let me do that. So this is equal to 3 divided by y minus 3, and let me make that a little bit shorter, in the interest of space, times x times y minus 3, minus this fraction, 2 over x, times x times y minus 3. Same with the denominator. I take this fraction, 5 over x, and multiply that times x times y minus 3, and minus 2 divided by x times y minus 3, and multiply that times x times y minus 3. So simply, I distributed the x times x, y minus 3 over each of the fractions in my complex fraction. All right, now I can see that here the y minus 3 cancels out with the y minus 3, here the x cancels out with this x, here the x cancels out with the x, and here the x cancels out with the x, and the y minus 3 cancels out with the y minus 3. And what do I have left over? I have over here a 3 times x minus 2 times y minus 3. Divided by, here I have 5 times y minus 3. And here I have just a negative 2. Everything else is canceled out. And then I simplify by multiplying or distributing the 2 with the y minus 3 and the 5 with the y minus 3. So this is 3x. A minus 2 times y is a minus 2y. A minus 2 times a minus 3 is a plus 6. Over here I have a 5 times a y is 5y, a 5 times a negative 3 is a minus 15, and I still have the minus 2. And then I collect common terms, so this is equal to 3x minus 2y plus 6, nothing more to do. Over here, oh, nothing more, to, oh no, I can collect those two, so I have a 5y minus 17, and that's about as simple as you can make this particular fraction. So that's how you do that. So sometimes, you need to do some factoring before you can more easily then figure out what the LCD is. Okay, let's try something else in this nature where you'll have to factor something first before you can go ahead and simplify the fraction.